So we are a special committee from the marketing department of Tiffany and Company, speaking to you, a member of our executive board of directors, about an ethical issue we feel that our company needs to address. Okay. I oh, and I've already lost mine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Shall we both? Do yes. This? Oh wait, mine went away too. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yes. Good morning. We are here to address you, the Board of Directors, about an ethical issue that we previously discussed in our last meeting. These ethical issues include human rights violations, the unethical use of land for diamond mining, the trail and sale and trade of blood diamonds, as well as the diamond industry that is exploiting a flawed system in order to improve its own bottom line. Blood diamonds are stones that are mined in areas controlled by rebel movements, rebel forces, in op opposition to their internationally recognized governments. These rebels often use torture tactics to force slaves to extract the mines, and which are then sold. These proceeds are then used to fund their firearms, as well as military actions against their governments. The situation came to light in the 1990s, and the international community was a, per, compelled to take action against these, these violations. In May of 2000, South African diamond producing countries met in Kimberley, South Africa to talk about the possible preventative actions that could be taken to avoid the sale of these diamonds. In 2003, participating countries as well as several civil society organizations and the international diamond industry negotiated a contract that came to be known now as the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, abbreviated KPCS. Members or participants of KPCS can only legally trade with other participants who meet the minimum requirements. Although the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme began with good intentions, it is an inadequate tool for preventing the sale and trade of blood diamonds. This process is easily evaded through forged certificates as well as rerouted shipments in and out of countries. Additionally, we feel that conflict-free is not a high enough ethical standard, that this process should also address human rights and environmental violations. Mining companies should require to pay workers a livable wage, responsibly monitor their use of child labor, provide safe working conditions, and reclaim all land used in mining operations. We are already aware of this problem within our company, yet fail to address it within the industry as a whole. For example, by implementing our corporate supplier assessment, we require all third-party vendors to agree to a vendor code of conduct submitting themselves to periodic assessments both internally and externally. However, these certifications are still continuing to be forged, and we as a company cannot sit idly by and let the diamond industry go unchecked. There needs to be a higher ethical standard that is set to the highest level of transparency. Governments are easily able to evade the regulations of KPCS because there is a lack of controls to actually enforce compliance. For example, the Kimberley process regulates and states that small batches of diamonds should be traceable back to their mine of origin. However, they lack to address the entire transpar transparency and traceability within the diamond industry and the supply chain. The downfall, this means that individual diamonds aren't required to be 100% traceable back to their mines. The downfall of a true transparency within the supply chain stems from the fact of the lack of independent diamond audits which then for creates gaps within the diamond supply where unethically mined diamonds can be infiltrated. Although on paper our participants' um, diamond control system may look strong, when in fact when we dig deeper into these issues, we find that their enforcement is in fact hollow. As a result, many participants, their control over their own diamond sector are weak or poor. While KPCS does take into account the violations that support blood diamonds and their basic human rights, they fail to ignore that the miners go through um, a lot of um, human rights violations. Our customers think of our diamonds as something as fashionable and luxurious. However, they fail to realize that for many miners, these diamonds are in fact associated with hardships. 
worker exploitation, human rights violations, human suffering, actually, and child abuse are just a few violations that KPCS doesn't take into consideration. Over one million workers earn the unlivable wage of less than a dollar a day. Furthermore, they lack the basic necessities, such as running water and proper sewage. They, their families are continually hungry and illiterate because they fail, they cannot provide adequate meals and decent education. Children are also used in this process because they're even seen as a cheaper source of labor. And their smaller size makes them ideal for extracting mines from narrow mine shafts. These children can't afford to, or aren't able to go to school because their families are dependent upon them in order to just merely survive financially. In addition to these lack of necessities, of essential necessities, these miners encounter various dangerous situations in these mines due to the lack of proper safety equipment, lack of proper tools, as well as the lack of proper training and techniques. Due to a lack of regulation and planning, the environment surrounding these mines is beginning to continually weaken. Some of these effects include soil erosion and deforestation, causing many of the local populations to have to relocate. Additionally, many rivers and streams are being polluted and rerouted, having a deadly effect on fish and wildlife in the area. Many mines are left unfilled once they are abandoned, allowing for stagnant rainwater to collect, creating the perfect breeding ground for waterborne diseases such as malaria. Taking this into consideration and examining the current state of our operating systems, we would like to establish the Tiffany Standard, a higher level of ethical mining, paying all employees a living wage, responsibly monitoring the use of child labor, providing the proper safety equipment and training, as well as reclaiming all land used in mining operations to equal or better conditions. By taking these steps, we ensure that not only we are, are we purchasing diamonds from mines that pay living wages and provide safer working conditions, we are providing a healthy and viable living option for the mining communities. We propose that our new Tiffany standard be marketed in a variety of different ways to make an impact in the industry in which we work. First, we would like to promote holistic advertising to increase the public's awareness of all um, of where our diamonds are actually coming from. Second, we would like to further increase the transparency within our operations, including a, providing a certificate of origin that authenticates our diamonds ethical sourcing. Late, lastly, we would like to implement an employee development program that enables them to confidently speak on the diamonds origin with customers, increasing the customer's confidence in our company, as well as informing the customer about the ethical issues with, at play within the industry. In particular, we recognize that many of the families in these communities have no other option than to send their children to work. However, we feel it would be financially feasible to provide a balance between work and education for these children. We propose paying an entire day's wages while allowing children to work in a safely conditioned mine for half the day, as well as for attending school for the other half of the day. To respond to our ethical obligation to the environment, we propose that all mining operations, current, past, and future, are held to a higher standard of restoring all land back to equal or better conditions than when the mine was operated. These steps include filling mining pits to remove the chance of stagnant rainwater buildup, as well as replacing topsoil in all mining locations. By implementing our new strategy, we hope to bring these shortcomings of the KPCS into light, into public attention. Once they are aware of the problem, we hope to, that our new marketing strategy, our new marketing campaign would educate them on the steps that we are taking and the industry in fact should take in preventing these human rights violations as well as the unethical use of land and the selling of these blood diamonds in, uh, in the jewelry industry of exploitation of uh, in exploitation, sorry, of the KPCS's shortfalls. On our website, we say that as an industry leader in the as a leader in the in jewelry industry, we see we are, we believe that we have a business imperative as well as a moral obligation to uphold ourselves to the highest ethical and responsible manner. 
not just in our own business operations, but in the industry supply chain as a whole. With the Tiffany standard, we hope to promote our and to, to prove to our competitors that a high, higher ethical standard is in fact financially possible and is really the best solution. We hope to motivate the entire industry to demand a higher ethical standard instead of exploiting KPCS's shortfalls to improve their bottom line. Thank you for your time. Place, didn't I? Um, you would have heard yeah. the students here. <laughs> yeah, um, it's okay though. I will, if you want to stay there, that's fine. I can just. Well, I don't want to put other teams at a disadvantage if I move, but I don't want you to miss. Okay, shush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to miss what you need to get. So I mean, I'm, no, that's okay. I'm. I don't have the background and I don't have the audience in the shot anyway. So, like, the main focus is just get them speaking. So, so we can be consistent. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I apologize. No, that's no worries. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank you.